Hello again, Gregor Arturo here with the Prometheus Initiative. So, today we're going to talk about spheres and connections and tubes, tubes which are connections, and maybe a little bit of philosophy, and uh, we'll see where this conversation goes. So, to start out, we're going to talk about this book, which I recommend you get if you're interested in such a thing, Meta Patterns Across Space, Time, and Mind by Tyler Volk. So meta-patterns. Patterns are found all throughout our reality. And there's certain patterns that are fundamental. And that's one thing we're going to be talking about a little bit. I'm going to read the contents of this book because it sort of sums up the fundamental patterns. Things to think about. Spheres, sheets and tubes, borders, binaries, centers, layers, calendars, arrows, which I like to call vectors, breaks, and cycles. So right now, we're going to talk about wow, spheres, okay? Now just imagine this orange is a perfect sphere. Just imagine. You can do this. I know. I guess I'm great too. Yeah. So a sphere is the most perfect simple type of geometry and that the center point is equal distant to everywhere else on the surface. If you imagine this in a 2D context, with the center point, that should dot within a circle. You can see it. So, uh, there you go. You see the dots like right there. Okay? Now, this is your 3D type of geometry. 2D would be a circle. 1D would be a dot. Um, now, fourth dimension. People don't fully understand fourth dimension sometimes. Maybe just say it's time. Well, it's really not time. It's, it's motion. It's change from one moment to the next. Well, people also think that we're usually in the third dimension. If we were just in the third dimension, it looks like this. There'd be no motion. So you need motion. Motion is really important for all this to interact and for this to exist. And time in itself, many people think is a linear thing. I and mean, it's not a linear thing. And when people think of what's the fundamental of motion, people think of it as a linear translation. Uh, no, not really. There's more fundamental motion. And that is rotation. Okay, you can see this as we were talking about this fundamental pattern, the dot within the circle, things rotating around each other. Same with time. Time is in a linear context. It's more of a um, elliptical, and it keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. It has to do with cycles. Um, except it's not a perfect circle. It's there's there's evolution. There's there's evolution within time. So, to also connect in terms of philosophy, a uh, metaphysical concept is that each sphere is a thought, an entity, a concept, or as some research call a whole on. It's a whole idea. Now, with this sphere, if it's rotating, and then you have other spheres, so say this is sphere two, my imaginary sphere, these guys are rotating, okay? You have them in a, a system of all these spheres and they're rotating. What naturally happens when you have a system of spheres rotating on their axis, a vortex is formed. And so we're going to talk also a little bit about vortex theory and how things can form. Well, there's two fu fundamental forms of rotation. So if I can do this right, we got clockwise going this way and counterclockwise. People say, well, it also depends on your perspective. And there's, yes, perspective will be the same either way. Because if it's saying it's clockwise for you, you know, or counterclockwise for you, it's clockwise for me. Well, there's also an axis, which we're going to talk about in terms of flow of the axis. So next, let's talk about how two spheres now will interact with themselves in an interesting concept with vortex theory. So let's say each sphere is a vortex. We'll imagine two vortexes, i.e. tornadoes. Okay? They're rotating in opposite directions. One's clockwise, one's counterclockwise. We're going to use my hands, for example. Right? So if this one is rotating this direction, so my fingers are like vectors, it's rotating this way, and this one is rotating this way. What happens when they rotate together, they work 
together like gears, just like gears, as above, so below. And the other interesting thing is they can also mesh, just as my fingers do. They will mesh together. And they'll form another ancient little symbol of Visky Pisces, right there. Two vortices wor working together. However, if you have two vortices spinning in the same direction, so if they're like this, you're gonna get like a collision. They're, they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna work the same. And this has to relate to like positive and negative charges. Same concept. Two negative charges will repel each other, while a negative and positive char charge will attract each other. Now, when you have these spheres connected to each other, there's a connection. Now, we're going to get into some more complex connections. That being, we'll start with the first simple one, tetrahedron. Okay? He's made out of toothpicks with hot glue. Now, there's five shapes I'm going to be talking about. Well, six actually. Nope, seven. Seven. Um, five platonic solids. This is the first most simple platonic solid. There's also the Merkaba, or cuboctahedron. And then there's the, uh, no, Merkaba is not the cuboctahedron, it's the star tetrahedron. And the cuboctahedron, also known as the vector equilibrium. But let's start with the tetrahedron, keep it simple. So, to really imagine this, you gotta imagine four spheres. These are four big spheres. So, this is a, a, a dumbed down version of the model. So imagine that each one is, the spheres are laying right against each other. And this is the most basic concept for a three-dimensional shape to form. Actually, that would be, you could say a triangle. That would be 2D, though. But you could still have three spheres pushed together. And you could also have two spheres pushed together. So it's really not the basic. But it's the most basic um, shape where there will be volume on the inside. Don't know what to say next. Well, I can introduce some other shapes. Let's do that. Let's just let's do some show and tell. We got we got a cube. Everyone's familiar with a cube. There's also the center point. But the center point's ir irrelevant. What I'm going to be talking about at the moment. This is for a, another concept. Um, so everyone's familiar with the cube. We got an octahedron, which also has a center point. I got a good old Merkaba, or star tetrahedron, which is two tetrahedrons interlaced together. If you can see, this is the four points to the tetrahedron, and this is the opposite one. And then we got a cube octahedron, or a vector equilibrium. And I'm going to discuss these much more in detail. Um, but uh, let's talk about some simple patterns. Just the, they're just cool. We'll show them off. So, as you can see, we got the octahedron. The octahedron is made with six points, eight faces, and twelve sides. While the cube, which is sort of like its symmetrical partner, has six points and eight sides. Oh, blah, blah, blah. eight points, six sides, and. 12 edges. So they share the same amount of edges, different vertexes or spheres, um, 